Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2004 Freightliner school bus with a C7 Caddy engine. The complaint on this bus is that the speedometer does not work on the dash and the transmission shifts erratically. The driver reported that it feels like the transmission is stuck on first gear and he couldn't tell how fast he was driving. So he just parked the bus here, abandoned it and left it here. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside the bus and confirm the complaint. After we confirm the complaint, we're gonna connect the scan tool to the bus so we can find out what kind of trouble codes we have in memory. So let's go inside the bus and confirm the complaint. All right, so I am inside the bus right now. I got the bus started. What we're gonna focus on is gonna be this gauge right here. Let's focus on this gauge because as you drive, this gauge should tell you how fast you're going. So now I'm going to start driving and let's see if this gauge is going to move. I mean I'm driving right now and our speedometer is stuck at zero. So right there, I'm driving, and the speedometer does not move. So, driver's complaint confirmed. So now I'm gonna stop the bus, and let's connect the scan tool to the bus so we can find out if we have any trouble codes in memory. I got the scan tool connected to the bus, so now let's scan it for some trouble codes. So let's click on this tab here that says truck. So our school bus is going to be in this heavy duty and bus category. So let's click on it. And we have to look for our make. So this is a Freightliner. Let's go to Freightliner. This Freightliner has got a Caterpillar motor. So let's click on Caterpillar. So this tab here that says systems scan, once I click on it, it's going to scan all the modules on the bus. And I'm going to turn the key on before I click on that system scan tab. I mean, I just want to apologize in advance because there is a buzzer here that's going to get turned on once I turn the key on. And I tried to find a fuse for it so I could pull it out, but I couldn't find a fuse. And it's hidden somewhere under the dash. I mean, the buzzer itself. I could have disconnected it, but I just couldn't. It's just a, such a pain to get to. So I apologize in advance for this buzzer. So I'm going to try to be fast when I scan it so that the buzzer does not annoy you when I turn the key on. So I'm going to turn the key on now so we can scan it. All right, so I have the key on. And I'm sorry for the buzzer in the background. I apologize, guys. All right, so the scanner has scanned all the modules on the bus. Oh man, this buzzer is just so annoying. I'm gonna turn the key off so we can get rid of this noise. And I hope I don't lose communication with, uh, with the scanner here. So I hope this stays here. I have turned the key off. So this is what I'm seeing here. On the left side of the screen here, we have a couple boxes. There's a green box, a red box. The green box here, you see this one that uh, has a check mark on it and it says ABS uh, Webco. This means that the scanner was able to talk to this control module and this is the ABS control module. So this check mark here means the scanner was able to identify this uh, control module here. And the red box with the X sign on it means it's either the scan couldn't talk to that control module or the control module does not exist on this particular vehicle. And on this bus, we don't have the air conditioning uh, control module, so this one doesn't exist. But what kind of catches my attention is this 
red box with the X on it next to the transmission, the automatic transmission right here. So this tells me that it's either the computer cannot talk to the transmission control module or the transmission control module does not exist. So which is not true because we have a transmission on this bus. So the transmission control module should be present here and we should be able to communicate with it. So it looks like right now our focus is going to be on this transmission control module because the driver said the transmission was shifting erratically and the speedometer on the dash also doesn't work and I just confirmed that. And the other green box here with a check mark, this box here that says diesel injection caterpillar, this is the ECM, the engine control module. So apparently our scanner can only talk to two modules on this bus, the engine control module and the ABS control module. We cannot talk to the transmission control module. We have to keep in mind the information that the driver gave to us. The driver stated that the transmission is shifting erratically and the speedometer on the dash does not work. So the transmission control module looks at the input coming from the vehicle speed sensor to upshift and downshift the transmission. And that vehicle speed sensor input is also used for vehicle speed. So this can be caused by a couple of things. So a defective vehicle speed sensor can cause this issue, but it wouldn't cause a no communication with the transmission control module. I mean, a defective vehicle speed sensor will cause the speedometer not working on the dash and the transmission we might even shift erratically, but we will still be able to communicate with the transmission control module. So with the transmission control module not being identified by the scanner tells me that we have more than a vehicle speed sensor issue. So what we could do is we can start by ruling out the vehicle speed sensor out of this equation first. We can test it and uh, we can, do, we can do it two ways. We can go straight at the vehicle speed sensor connector or we can do it at the uh, transmission control module connector because the vehicle speed sensor reports straight to the transmission control module. So right now, uh, we don't have any trouble codes in these control modules because if we did, we would have had a yellow box here with a triangle and exclamation point. So which is not the case here. I'm not going to bother uh, clicking into this control module to see if there's any trouble codes. We don't have any trouble codes there. So again, let's just focus on this transmission control module here, which is not being able to communicate. If I double click on it, it's probably going to say uh, unit does not exist or something. All right. So right here, as I clicked on this transmission control module, we have a message here on the screen which says the control unit does not respond. So we cannot talk to the transmission control unit. So right now my next step is going to be locating that transmission control unit and then it's a computer. Like any other computer, we need to have a power supply and a ground supply for any transmission module to work or any module to work. So we're going to go to a transmission control module, do our checks. We're going to we have to make sure we're getting power and ground at the transmission control module. And then we'll go from there. I'm going to print the wiring diagram and then I'll bring you guys back up. All right. So I printed out the uh, transmission control module wiring diagram. And sure enough, like I said, the vehicle speed sensor reports straight to the transmission control module. And the transmission control module sits somewhere around this area. So I'm going to have to remove all these covers here. All these panels got to come out so I can get access to the transmission control module. So when I remove the uh, fuse box cover here, so there is a fuse box and down there, I don't know if you can see, this is the ABS control unit and the transmission control unit is down there. So I'm going to have to take all of this out and then bring you guys back up. All right, so I did remove all these covers here off camera and down there is the ABS control unit and here is our transmission control unit. Right there, as you can see, it says Allison and I actually got these uh, transmission control unit connectors covers off just to speed up the process 
and I did all this off camera this is really easy to do it has a couple screws here and up there that you have to remove to get access to these control units now that we found where our transmission and control unit is so this guy now I'm gonna bring up the wiring diagram so we can look at the wiring diagram together and then we're gonna locate our powers and grounds on the wiring diagram then we're gonna come back here on the transmission and control unit to do the checks all right so I printed out the wiring diagram of the transmission control module and we're gonna focus on the left side of the wiring diagram right here so this is the transmission control module itself we're not gonna worry about all these sensors and these solenoids let's just focus here for now uh, we're gonna I'm gonna bring you guys close to the control unit here so we have two connectors there's this J1 and J2 so this is J1 and J2 is down here and we're just gonna focus on our power supply wires and our ground supply wires and right here is our ground supply so it looks like this wire goes from here to here and here so this is pin 1 so it's a gray wire and then pin 5 so right here so 1 and 5 are ground supply wires and then this one here that's coming from the fuse so this is a fuse and it says hot at all times so this fuse here this 10 amp fuse supplies power to our control unit on pin 3 and then this yellow wire here which is on pin 2 goes here on this fuse which says hot in on or start so this one here is hot when the key is turned on so the yellow wires get power when the key is turned on and then this pink wire is hot all the time so it looks like the first five wires on this connector are our ground and power supply wires so first and five are ground wires and then three no 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 so 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 one and five are ground supply wires and then two three and four are our power supply wires and I already went through the whole wiring diagram and the rest of them are just you know input and output wires some of these go to the transmission itself for the uh, shift solenoids the other ones here go to various sensors on the bus so these are the the wires we're gonna be focused on so these first five wires so let's go to the control unit and do our checks all right so here's our control unit and I just put our wiring diagram next to it I'm gonna be using this test light here to test our powers and grounds and I have a set of jumper cables here coming from the battery so this is gonna be my ground supply and this is gonna be my power supply and I have my test light connected to battery positive now so if I touch the ground this test light should light so right there and as you can see my test light is lit right there so the test light is lit we have good power and ground so, so now let's do our tests at the transmission control module all right so here's our transmission control module we have the gray connector and the red connector so our power supply wires and our ground supply wires are on the gray connector so uh, you guys won't be able to see uh, these wires here have numbers on them so from the left going across to the right is number 1 to 16 and J well on the wiring diagram it says J1 so J1 connector is this one because we have communication if you see here on the wiring diagram we have communication lines on this connector and as you can see right here this green and brown and then a yellow behind it you guys won't be able to see it but these are communication lines so this tells me that we are on the right connector so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the first wire which is pin number one so on the wiring diagram right here it's a gray wire hopefully you guys can see it properly let me zoom in a little bit so right here gray wire 
so this is a ground supply so I'm gonna back probe the first wire here all right so now I'm gonna bring my test light in the picture here I have this bug probe connected to the first wire which is the ground supply and I have my test light connected to battery positive so if we have ground there which is supposed to be there our test light should light and I don't know if you saw that test light light and right there our test light is lit so this tells me that we have power on this first wire so this wire right here on the connector so the other ground supply is the fifth wire so we're just gonna count five wires from starting from this wire so one two one two three four five so this one here should be our another ground supply so this is dark I don't think you can see this I'm gonna get the red back probe all right so we're gonna find the second ground supply wire so one two three four five is this one is the fifth wire so I'm gonna back probe it carefully because you don't want to damage the pins on the connector I still have my test light connected to battery positive so if I touch this my test light should light and as you can see my test light is lit so we have uh, good ground supplies to our transmission control unit the test light is lighting so this tells me that we don't have a voltage drop issue somewhere so now let's check our power supply wires so the second wire here should be one of the power supply wires and which is this wire right here I don't know if you can see it this wire right here on the dire wiring diagram so which is this yellow wire here I mean the wires on the connectors are not color coded they're color coded on the wiring diagram but on the connector they're not they're all gray so we have good ground to the transmission control module so now let's check for power supply now I'm gonna switch my test light to battery ground all right so I switched my test light to battery ground so now I have to turn the key on so I can test these two power supply wires because these wires get hot with the ignition turned on all right so I do have the key on as you guys can hear the buzzer and right here we have power on this wire my test light is connected to battery ground so we have power on this wire so we have power on this wire right here the yellow wire so now let's check because two these two yellow ones so two and three are the power supplies with the key on so no 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 two and four I'm sorry so two and four are the power supplies with the key on so we checked two so now let's check four so one two three four so now let's back probe four and I still have my test light connected to battery ground so right here we have power to the control unit so now let's check the pink wire the third wire this wire right here which is supposed to be a constant power supply we turn the key off first all right so this is what I just did guys I checked our ground supply wires so pin number one so the first wire is a ground supply when I had my test light connected to battery positive and I back probe this wire my test light lit and we did the same thing on this fifth wire so pin number five it's also a gray wire so my test light lit also because my test light was still connected to battery positive and we just checked these two yellow wires which are supposed to have power with the key on so I turned the key on we had power on this on these two yellow wires so wire number two and wire number four so these ones so now we're gonna check this constant power supply this guy right here this fuse here and this is a pink wire and it's pin number three so let's back probe this pin and 
switch our test light to battery negative so battery negative here and with this wire back probe the test light should light so now let's check this third wire all right so here we are we're still on the same connector so the third wire should be this one so one two three so i'm gonna back probe the third wire right there so now let me bring my test light here so I have my test light connected to battery ground. Let's see if our test light is gonna light. And as you can see, our test light is not lighting. And we're making good connection. I got my, I'm not stuffing the pins. I'm just gently back probing it and I'm sure we're making connection. And as you can see, we have a test light that's not turning on. So our test light is not lit. So two things. It's either we have a open fuse or a broken wire. So let's check the fuse first. So we still have our test light connected to ground and let's find this fuse. So right here guys, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna test next. All right, so this is what we just did guys. We checked for power here at pin number three, this pink wire and there's no power here. So now we're gonna work our way back to the fuse. It could be two things. It's either this fuse is blown or we have an open wire between the fuse and the control unit. So let's go to the fuse, let's locate this fuse and test it. So here is the fuse box and these two fuses here are the fuses that supply power to the transmission control unit. So I'm gonna test them. So there's no power on this one. I believe this is the one that gets power with the key on. And let's check the other one. No power here. There's power here. How? So this fuse here is open. Right there. Power on one side. And no power on this side. So power here. No power here. Okay. So let's check this other one. I believe this one is the one that head gets power with the key on so i'm going to turn the key on so we can check this one also so we know this fuse is blown now let's check this one so the key is on let's check this fuse there's power on this fuse and there's power on this so there's power on both sides of the fuse so this fuse is good but this one is not so there's power here but no power there okay so let's replace this fuse and see what happens all right, so we're gonna get this fuse replaced, so I'm gonna remove it. Let's look at it a little bit. Can you guys see that? It's completely blown. Okay, let's put a new fuse there and see what happens. So I'm gonna install this new fuse. And right there, I'm gonna get ready to install this fuse. What the heck? Did you guys see that? There's a dead short right there. Wow, I just blew it. I just blew it right off. There's a dead short right here. I hope you guys saw that. Let me grab another fuse. And just watch this. Whoa, there's a dead short right here. So it just blew the fuse. So right here, it just blew it right up. Okay, so there's a dead short. Let's look at the wiring diagram again. All right, so this fuse here is blown. We have power on this leg of the circuit, but we don't have power here. Once we put the fuse on, it blows it. So there's a short between the fuse and the transmission control unit. It could be an external short somewhere here on the wire or here inside the control unit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disconnect this connector here on the control unit and put the fuse back up and see if the fuse is still gonna blow. So after disconnecting this connector, if the fuse continues to blow, I will know my short is between somewhere between here on the wire. But after disconnecting this, if the fuse doesn't blow, that would tell me that the short is in the control unit itself. So 
the next step right now is going to be because that's the only thing I can see. Because if we had a short somewhere up here, we wouldn't have power at this point. So we have power here. So the short is just between this point and the control unit, the transmission control unit. So I'm going to disconnect this connector. I'm going to disconnect the gray connector and see if when I put the fuse here, it's still going to blow or not. So let's do that. All right, so I'm going to start by disconnecting. I still have my third wire back probed. That pink wire is still back probed here. So now I'm going to disconnect this gray connector here on the control unit. All right, so right here I have it disconnected. I can disconnect both of them, but no, I'm just going to disconnect this gray one because that fuse, the wire coming from the fuse is on this connector. So I got this disconnected. So now let's put the new fuse on and see what happens. All right, so right there, let's put that fuse there and see. Let's see if it's gonna blow it. Oh, it's not blowing, okay, right there. All right there, I did install the fuse and it did not blow. And that's a constant power. So now I have my test light connected to battery ground. So now let's see if we're gonna have power on both sides of the fuse. So right here, there's power one side of the fuse. Let's go to the other side and right there. So now we have power on both sides of the fuse. So power here, power here. Now. Let's come down here on the connector. I still have my back probe tool here on the third wire. So let's see if we are having power here now. Oh, bam, <laughs> right there. Now we have power making it at the connector. So what does this mean? Let me show you guys the wiring diagram again. So this is what's going on. When I put a fuse here with the control module connected, it blows the fuse. Once I disconnect this connector, so once I disconnect here, I get the connector disconnected, the fuse doesn't blow. So what do you guys think? With this connector connected, the fuse blows. So this tells me that between the, between the fuse and the connector, our wire is not shorted externally. So the control unit itself is shorted internally. So right now, with the connector disconnected, we have power here. Now, what's gonna happen to the fuse when I connect the connector back up? So right here, let's check this fuse again. So this is a constant power, the key is not on. So watch, there's power here, power here, and our connector is disconnected. So now I'm gonna connect it back up. Okay, I'm getting ready to connect this connector. So I'm gonna give you a shot of me connecting the connector on the transmission control unit and the fuse up there, and let's see what happens. Did you hear that? So once I connected it, the fuse blew. Now let's go check that one more time. Right here, there's power here, no power there. See that? Power, no power. Power, no power. And this blue, as soon as I connected this connector, so if I disconnect this and put a new fuse here, the fuse is not gonna blow. Let me see if I have another fuse here. So I have my transmission control unit disconnected. So now, let me put another fuse there and see what happens. So let me remove this. Fuse is completely blown. All right, so right there, I'm gonna put the fuse back in. And as you can see, I have my control unit disconnected. One connector is, so right there, now I have power on both sides of the fuse, the bottom side, and upper side. So, the transmission control unit is shorted. So this is why the driver said that the transmission was shifting erratically. 
So this is another reason why the scanner could not communicate with the transmission control unit. So it's not receiving all its powers. It's receiving power on two pins, but not the third one. So this could be caused by a couple of things. Um, this other connector here is our, I believe, output connector. This is the these the the wires uh, coming off of this connector go to our shift solenoids in the transmission and a bunch of other stuff. So I can disconnect this to see because if we have a shorted solenoid inside the transmission, this could also do that. I don't think um, that's the issue though, but maybe because what would cause this transmission control unit to go bad? Or maybe the heat, I guess, because it's just right there next to the firewall. You know, over time with the edge, you know, the heat can kill these control units too. Now, let's do one more test. I'm gonna disconnect this connector. So both connectors are disconnected. As you guys can see, this one is a gray connector and this is the red one, so it says, red and gray here. Okay, both connectors are disconnected. Now, we have power on both sides of the fuse. Okay, all right, so another test I wanna do is connecting this gray connector, which has our ground and power supply wires without connecting this red connector because this red connector is where these solenoids on the uh, transmission are and if we have a shorted solenoid in the transmission that could be uh, drawing a lot of current which can cause that fuse up there to blow so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this unplugged while I plug this one to see if the fuse is gonna blow I'm gonna show you the same thing here on the wiring diagram so here we are on the wiring diagram. So this connector here is technically the one we were just playing with. So we tested our power supply wires and our ground supply wires and we found out that there's ground going to the control unit and there's power on these yellow wires but we don't have power on this pink wire here. and when we did our checks we found out that this fuse was blown and when we disconnect this the fuse doesn't blow when we connect this back up the fuse blows so let's go a little bit further down here and on this connector the red connector you'll see that most wires on this connector go to the transmission itself as you can see right here this is the transmission i hope you guys can read there it says transmission assembly. So these here are the shift solenoids. So if we follow these wires coming from the transmission, so the wiring harness on the transmission go here on this other connector, which is the red connector. So all these wires, these ones, these wires go to the shift solenoid, all these, and some of them go to these speed sensors here. We have the uh, turbine, speed sensor we have the output speed sensor and the engine speed sensor so, so this connector here is where all our output and input devices are so if we have a shorted solenoid if one of these solenoids in the transmission is shorted it's going to be drawing too much current through the control unit which is gonna eventually blow this fuse. So if I disconnect this connector, it means I'm isolating all this from the rest of the circuit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect this connector here and I'll do the same test. If I disconnect this connector and leave this connector here on, and if the fuse continues to blow, this will tell me that the short is in the control unit, not in one of these solenoids because I will disconnect and isolate these so now let's go to the control unit so here's our red connector this is the connector that has all our 
uh, shift solenoid wires and vehicle speed sensor wires and so on. And this one here is our power supply, ground supply, wire connector, and communication lines, and so on. So, with me not connecting this means if we have a shorted solenoid in the transmission, it means it's out of the way, right? So if I connect this connector and our fuse doesn't blow, this will mean we have a short somewhere between the control unit and the transmission. Okay, so now let's connect this connector just by itself and see what happens. And I don't know if I can. So what I'm doing is I'm connecting this without the red one and I will have you guys focus on that fuse there. So just listen to it. Let's see if it's gonna blow. Did you see that? It just blew the fuse. And right here on the control unit, I only have the gray connector, not the red connector. So the issue is right here on the control unit itself. But we're just not gonna replace the transmission control module without testing those solenoids because maybe we have a shorted solenoid that caused this control unit to go bad or to fail in the first place. And now that the control unit is bad, we, won't, we cannot tell exactly if that solenoid is bad or not. No, I'm gonna correct this. We can still tell if we have a bad solenoid in a transmission. That's what I'm gonna do next. Before we replace this transmission control unit, we're gonna do a home test on all the solenoids in the transmission. And we're gonna check pretty much everything in this transmission control unit wiring diagram. Any output device that can cause this transmission control unit to fail, we have to test all of them before we replace it. So we know that uh, our control unit is shorted. I mean, that's, there's, there's no questions about that. Now we're gonna test our shift solenoids in the transmission. So I'm gonna bring up the wiring diagram once again so I can show you what kind of tests we're gonna do. All right, so I got another type of wiring diagram here. This is the OEM wiring diagram. And I don't know if I mentioned this already, the type of transmission we are working with is the pre-fourth generation Allison transmission. So we know that our transmission control module is shorted, but we're just not gonna put a new transmission control module in it without finding out what happened or what caused this transmission control module to go bad because usually they just don't fail like that. I mean, they do sometimes, you know, caused by the heat and stuff, but we have to do some checks first to make sure we are fixing the cause, not just the concern. Because if we just fix the concern, if the cause is still there, the new control unit we're gonna install is gonna get damaged too. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna focus on the output devices first. And the output devices we have are our shift solenoid. Because if we have a shorted shift solenoid in the transmission, it's gonna take this transmission control unit down. So as you can see here on the left side of the wiring diagram, we have a bunch of bulbs and switches. So these are some of the bulbs that are on the dash. I'm not really worried about these. These are some of the switches and this is a school bus. So we don't have some of these switches here. Some of these functions on the bus don't exist. So we're not gonna worry about this. These here are just our power supplies and the things we already checked. So now we're gonna go on this end of the wiring diagram. So we're gonna focus on these solenoids right here. So this here is the connector at the transmission. What we could do, we can go under the bus and do some checks right here at the transmission electrical connector. But we don't have to do that. We can just do these checks right here at the transmission control unit connector. All right, so the next test I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an ohm test on this shift solenoid. I'm just gonna do it right here at the transmission control unit connector. So I'm gonna be checking one solenoid at a time. So I'm gonna start with solenoid A. And the spec for solenoid A is 4.5 to 7 ohms. 
and the temperature should be between 75 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So the spec 4.5 to 7 to uh, 7 ohms. I'm going to check all of them like I said. I'm going to check all of them but I'm just going to show you the first one I'm going to check. So I'm going to check this one so I can show you the procedure and then I would check the rest of them off camera and after I'm done checking all of them I'll tell you what we're going to do next so I'll show you my findings. So here on the wiring diagram the wires for solenoid A are pin 22 and pin 23. So if I back probe these two wires I will read the resistance of this solenoid here. So let's find pin 22 and 23 on the transmission and control unit connector. Alright so here's our connector and there are the numbers right there. I don't know if you can exactly see them but I'm gonna back probe pin 22 and 23 and then I'll bring you guys back up. Alright so right there I back probed pin 22 and 23. Alright so now I'm going to bring my voltmeter here. I'm gonna put it on the ohm scale. Let's turn it on. And solenoid A should read between 4.5 to 7 ohms. So now let me connect these guys. So right here, we are reading 0.6.4 ohms. So our solenoid, solenoid A, is within spec. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna go down the wires here and check the resistance of all the solenoids, and then I'll bring you guys back up. All right, so I checked all the shift solenoids. They were all within spec. So now I don't see what else can cause this. I'm gonna test these switches here. Some, I mean, like I said earlier, the bus does have some of these switches, but not all of them. And I see a pressure switch here. Pressure switch manifold. I'm also gonna check this and these other and there's a throttle position sensor here and then what else and this is is the neutral safety switch on the transmission it also reports to the transmission control unit i mean i was really concerned about the solenoid because usually the it's the solenoids that uh, take out transmission control units especially if you have a shorted solenoid but the, so i'm going to check these switches here and maybe the throttle position sensor and then if everything checks out okay we're just gonna go ahead and replace this transmission control unit all right guys so I checked everything everything checks out okay now it comes down to the defective transmission control unit itself so the transmission control unit is bad I wish I could really show you what went wrong but I can't because everything checks out okay and I even checked the uh, solenoid at different temperatures to see if we were gonna have a higher resistance but and again this resistance test sometimes is not a good test but I don't think if there's any other test I could have done um, I checked everything I disconnect everything that I could have disconnected to see if that fuse up here wouldn't blow but you know I got everything disconnected but once I connected to the control unit itself it blows a fuse so the unit is shorted so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the transmission control unit uh, the transmission control unit after replacing it it has to be reprogrammed so I have a similar bus around here uh, it's got a engine issue but the transmission is the same so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try this. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm just going to give it a try. I'm going to get the transmission control unit out of that other bus and put it in here. Even without programming it, I'll just try to see if it's going to work. I'm just going to remove it, plug the, the other one in and see if it works. If it does, that's fine. I mean, it's going to save me some money. 
But if it doesn't, we're going to have to order a new transmission control unit. And once it comes in, we're going to program it. And then we'll see the uh, after repair result. All right, so I'm going to show you the other used transmission control unit that I have. So here it is. Ta-da! I mean, it is a used transmission control unit. And as you can see, it looks exactly as this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this one. So I'm going to undo these bolts here. One, two, and then there's another bottom bolt over here. Once I take all of these out, then I'm going to install this one. Let me just sit it over here. Then I'm going to install this control unit and then we'll see what happens. So let's put this one on here and then see what happens. So, so after installing this one, we're gonna see if the fuse up there is gonna continue to blow. So let's swap this transmission control unit. So I'm gonna disconnect it. So right here, here comes the old one. And it says, it says caution, do not ground to vehicle chassis. So it looks like this case here shouldn't touch chassis ground. <clears throat> it's got some isolated mounting points here. <coughs> All right, so here's the original one. And here is the used one I got from, so I'm just gonna put, sit this right here. And here's the used one that I got from the other school bus that we have here. And I'm just gonna try this guys. I don't know if it's gonna work, but let's try it. Uh, that other transmission didn't have any issue. So the, uh, the bus, where this transmission control unit came out of it didn't have an issue like i said it only had a engine issue so and this transmission control unit has to be programmed and it's the same transmission the same exact here same everything so if it doesn't work i'm just gonna connect everything back up and try it if it works that's fine if it doesn't I'm gonna have to reprogram it and then we'll see. But let's try first and see. Maybe it's not gonna require programming. It should, but it's, you know, it's always worth the try. I'm going to plug in this connector. Okay, right here. Now let's plug in the red connector. So both our connectors have been installed. So I connected the uh, transmission control unit connectors back up. So now I'm gonna install a new fuse up here to see. And as you guys can see, this one is not blowing. So there's no short there. And I have both connectors connected. So now let's check this fuse. So we have power on one side and we also have power on the other. So power here and power here. Okay? And if we turn the key on, I'm gonna turn the key on so we can also check the other fuse. So power here, power here. So the key is on, let's check the fuse next to it. Right there, test light is lit. Test light is lit, so we have power on both sides of the fuse. Now let's check this one, there's power. So there's power on both sides of this fuse as well. All right, so there's no point of checking these powers and grounds here on the transmission control unit again. So we just put another used transmission control unit on it. So what we did was this fuse was blowing before. After replacing this control unit, now this fuse is no longer blowing. So I believe 
we will automatically have power here at this pin. If we want, we could double check here and see if we have our powers and grounds, but there's, it's, there's no point. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the bus and test drive it. Again, I didn't reprogram it. I'm just going to try. If it works, that's fine. If it doesn't, then I'm going to have to reprogram it. All right, so it is the moment of the truth. Um, this is the transmission unit that I just replaced. I have installed the used transmission control unit here. It came out of our buses here, and it's the same bus, same year, same model, same type of transmission, but it's not programmed to this bus yet. I'm gonna try it first without programming it, and hopefully it works. If it doesn't, then we're gonna have to reprogram it. I don't think it will, but I'm just gonna try. So, I mean, I'm just gonna try because I know you have to program this transmission control unit first. But I'm just gonna try. Then if it doesn't, we will program it. I'm gonna connect the scan tool back up to the bus and see if I can be able to communicate with this. <laughs> All right, so I got the scan tool connected back to the bus. Now let's see what we're gonna find. I'm gonna scan it to see if I'm gonna be able to talk to this transmission control module. Let's go truck. And right here, let's click on heavy duty and bus. And let's search for our make. It is a Freightliner. So right here, Freightliner. And this has got a CAT C7 motor in it, so it's a Caterpillar. So uh, we're gonna do systems scan. So I'm gonna turn the key on now and there will be a buzzer here that's gonna be making noise, so I apologize in advance for that. All right, so right here, can you tell the difference now? We have three green boxes with check marks on them. So you see right now we have this transmission control unit here has been recognized by this scanner. So the scanner can talk to this transmission control unit now and the ABS control module and the ECM. So this is what we had to see, but remember when we first started, we couldn't see this. It was this red box with the X on it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on it and let's see if we have any trouble codes in memory. So right here, it looks like we have one fourth code. It says unknown error. And let's see if we can look at some data pairs. And right there. Let me see if I can erase this trouble code. try to erase it okay so let's go to activations solenoid test error memory clearing let's start that so error memory clearing let's click confirm I don't know if that error memory clearing is gonna help, but it looks like we're just gonna have to reprogram it. I mean, I'll, I'll, drive, I'll test drive it first and see what happens. Let's go back. So right here, we still have this hard code. It, the, this red triangle with the exclamation point here means this code is an active code, so it's a hard code that's right here constantly. Well, it just turned into a green triangle, which is good. It means we were just able to erase it. This is good. So let's see what we got. And I'm gonna customize this list. I just wanna look at engine speed and some gear ratios. So let's go engine speed. I'm gonna test drive it guys just to see. I think that's all. 
So our TPS sensor percentage is showing 20, oh no, 2.8. I'm gonna step on the uh, gas pedal to see if this speed here should change. Hold on, this speed here should change as I step on the gas pedal. And right there, it just went to 100%. So that's good. So now I'm gonna start the bus. All right, so I just made a list of some data bits I wanna look at while I'm driving. So now let's go on a test drive. And down here, here is the old control unit. And there is the used one that I just installed. So I'm gonna give you a shot of the dash. As you can see, we only have the uh, park brake light on. No other lights, which is good. So I don't know how I'm going to be able to test drive this and look at the uh, data bits. My scanner down there, I'm gonna be monitoring these data bits as I'm driving. So now let's go on a test drive. So guys, remember before the speedometer wasn't working. And when we first scanned it, we couldn't communicate to the transmission control unit. And now we are communicating with the transmission control unit because we just replaced it. So now let's see if we made a good call. So as I'm test driving this, I'm gonna see how it shifts and we also gonna check to see if the speedometer is gonna read. We have to see if the speedometer is gonna tell us at what speed we're going. So let's do this. Are you curious? Let's see what we got. We are driving and it looks like our speedometer gauge is moving right here. So we are reading about 20 miles an hour right now. So far so good. still driving and our speedometer is working the transmission is shifting fine so now I'm gonna floor it let's see how fast we can go so right there we just up shifted so I'm doing about 55 right now oh nice this is awesome This is awesome guys, this is a fix. Transmission shifts perfectly, no weird lights on the dash, everything works just fine. So our speedometer is definitely reading. So I'm gonna turn off the camera, drive back to the shop and then I'll bring you guys back up once I get to the shop so we can wrap up this video. Alright, so the engine is off. We are back here at the shop, so let's wrap up this video. Uh, the issue was this guy right here. The transmission control unit is shorted. I mean, the old one was shorted. We replaced it with that transmission control unit over there. It is a used one. I got it off of another school bus we have here. I mean, it's the same school bus year, same model, same everything. These transmission control units usually require uh, programming them after you replace them. But this one worked just fine. I mean, when I test drove it, it drives just fine and it up shifting very well. You know, I know it had a code, that unknown code that was in memory. Once, When I first turned the key on, there was a light on the dashboard that was saying check transmission. But the light went off after I cleared out that unknown trouble code that was in the transmission control unit I'm gonna leave it right here and again if you have a control unit issue make sure you check your outputs and inputs correctly before you replace the control unit so I hope you like this video if you do give it a thumbs up if you don't give it a thumb down but if you do you gotta tell me why if this is your first time here subscribe to my youtube channel and while you're down there Ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. 
If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.